friends, how are ya? Um, okay, so I'm uploading a video today. I didn't like the video I did last time. I think it was, it didn't turn out good. I didn't get across my point of what I wanted to teach, so I redid it, okay? So for my students, if you um, watched the first video, and I think there was only a few, um, this will be credit for you. And if you didn't, this is gonna be next week's project, okay? All right. Um, okay, so let's start with good things. I have been babysitting a lot. And if you guys don't remember, I have two little brand new grandbabies and they're twins. One is named Felix and one is named Miles. And they're about mm, seven months old now. And so they're so cute. I just adore them. I don't know how many of you guys have like a real close relationship with your grandma and granddad. It's a thing. It's like a secret club. <laughs> I didn't know about this club until I had grandbabies, but when I get to be with my grandbabies, it's just everything, all the sad, all the worry, all the nervous goes, oh, like, Because I get to hold them and play with them, and I don't have to, you know, deal with the stress of being a parent. Sometimes being a parent is a little stressful, but when you're a grandparent, you don't have that stress. It's just the secret club, I'm just telling you. So that's my super duper good thing. I adore my grandbabies. Okay. All right, so what are we going to do today? Um, I did a drawing and I think some of you guys saw it last week and again it's kind of like we're doing a little series about mm, staying home and staying safe it's kind of when you do when you do more than one drawing at a time with the same theme it's called a series or sometimes people call it like a body of work but um, you know when you're an artist you do something that has the same theme over and over again it's kind of like a series right so our series is about how to stay home and stay safe most of my drawings I find have been kind of geared toward that, okay? Um, so let me show you my drawing, okay? I'm gonna turn this a little bit. All right, so I did a series of feathers and I'm gonna show you how to draw the feather. Um, why I did the feathers was this, for one reason, we've been talking a lot about value and we've also been talking about how to wrap a texture and um, wrap a texture around um, an object to make it look realistic. And feathers are super duper great for that because, um, well, the form, of fun the form and function of a feather is that um, it has a quill in the center and then, you know, the shape bends out on both sides. So if you look at my value scale, it's really like a value scale that's bent around the shape of the feather. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do today is show you how to draw the value scale. And what else I'm going to show you to do is how to design your page using positive and negative shapes. Um, all right, let me explain positive and negative shapes. Um, positive shapes are the image itself, and today it's the feather. Negative shapes are the image or the space and shape around the image, okay? Oh, there's my son Emmett trying to be super quiet. <laughs> Hi, Emmett. He just mowed my lawn. Thanks for mowing my lawn, honey. It's a nice day out today, right? Um, okay, yeah. So positive and negative shapes are kind of a big deal in art. They have to do with how you format your page. How you format your paper is like really, really important because you're telling a visual story. And if you just plunk a feather, like if you just plunk a feather, like right in the middle, it's not going to be as interesting as if you break your borders, break your borders, break your borders, and have some objects um, kind of hanging off the edge, right? And there's also kind of like a theory in, I'm going to turn this up so you can see my face a little bit. Um, I don't know if this is like an accurate theory or not. Some of my art friends can give me a shout out, but I have found in terms of positive and negative space, if the negative space is pretty much equal to the positive space, it's going to be a better drawing. Here's why. Um, a lot of my students tend to draw small and I don't know what that is. Like when I, I've been a teacher in art, I don't know, for 11 years and I started out in elementary and then I moved to middle school and I've noticed a thing. Here's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> um, little kids draw giant. Little kids draw so big, they fill up their whole page. They're not afraid to draw a giant. And that's a good thing because their positive space and their negative space is about 50%. Does that make sense? Okay. But when you get to be like in middle school, I've noticed that your drawings got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So your drawings get teensier when you get older. I think it's just maybe a little bit of a matter of confidence because when you're a little kid, you're like, yeah, I love to draw. I love to draw and I'm going to draw. <laughs> Right, but then you get older and you're like, oh, it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look right. Or, you know, kids get a little critical or 
more critical of themselves when they get older. But here's what I want you to do. Don't worry about making it look realistic. Worry about your size scale relationship, okay? We talked about that before, right? So you need to fill up your paper 50-50 positive and negative. And when I was in college, I studied an artist named Edgar Degas. And I'm just gonna show you like a little picture of his artwork because I like studied him and studied him and studied him because he was masterful. He was a genius at putting his positive and negative space together. And his drawings were, and his paintings were always beautiful. They were amazing and I couldn't stop looking at them. He was great at moving your eye around the page. He was great at breaking the borders. And he was also great at making that positive, the object itself, and the negative 50-50, right? But Because like if you draw teensy teensy small, then your negative space is giant. And you're gonna have to fill your page. It's like a teeny little M&M &M in the middle of a giant white paper, an M&M &M in a snowstorm. That's not gonna hold anybody's attention, <laughs> right? Okay, so when you draw, try to consider positive and negative. Let me show you, just to see if I can find that on my iPad. Um, hi. All right, so I pulled up Edgar Degas. Oh, that's not what I want, that's not what I want, that's not what I want. Shh, go ahead, I'm listening, but that's not what I want. Okay, so here's a picture. Oh, darn it. <laughs> okay, here's a picture. Oh, how bright is it? Is it? That's way too bright. Darn it. Let me turn it down. Maybe if I put the picture like this and turn it down, I'll be able to see it. Can you see it now? Um, this is called At the Mil at the Millinery. A millinery was a hat shop, okay? Because Edgar, Edgar Degga was what we call an impressionist and he lived a long, long time ago, like during the 1900s, okay? So just take a look at how great he is at his balance of positive and negative spaces. Positive are the image, negative is the space around the image, right? And he doesn't plunk the lady at the hat shop like right in the middle. He puts her off to the side and he breaks his border. So make sure that when you're drawing and you wanna have that feeling of it being more um, naturalistic, break your borders a little bit because if you just plunk, if he would have just like drawn her like right in the middle and then nothing around the edge, it wouldn't have been interesting. When you use positive shapes, which are the objects, negative shapes, which are the shapes around the objects, you can pull the eye around the page and that puts you more in control of your paper because when we're drawing, we're learning little tricks and tools on how to be in control of your paper. And uh, when you put your image off the page with your positive shapes, it instantly breaks up the negative shapes better. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah? All right, so that's my little shout out for my friend Edgar Degas. He was a genius, I loved him. Literally in college, I looked at picture after picture after picture of Edgar Degas, and I think that really did help me to understand how to format my paper, okay? So check him out, look up his name's Edgar E D. G-A-R, degas, like degas. There's no degas in divan, <laughs> go. <laughs> it's a joke, right? Um, so D-E-G-A-S, degas, check him out. He's great at positive and negative shapes. Got it? All right. So I did a little bit of homework for you guys because I have just realized that, oh my gosh, I've been talking this whole time. Let me see if you can see this. I'm gonna pinch in a little. I've been talking this whole time and I've not even really talked about the formal elements, which is funny because, can you say, scooch it back a little bit. All right, which is funny because I always teach with the formal elements in mind. This is the alphabet of how to make a wonderful, solid, interesting piece of art. And there's seven of them and I kind of screwed up the numbers. <laughs> I'm not a numbers person, so I just scribble it out and put it down. So, but they are, there are seven and they're called art elements. I say it, you say it, art elements, art elements. Excellent, you did it, fabulous. Okay, so there's line, there's shape, there's color, there's space, there's texture, there's form, and there's value. So for my students, please, please, please write these down on a separate piece of paper because I'm gonna be referring back to these as we study them, as we go along in our little virtual world of the art class with Ms. Flynn. Um, I'm gonna be talking about one, at least one or two of these, and I've already talked about them, but I never gave them like a formal name. Well, they are called the art elements. So if you think about it, um, when you learn the ABCs, you learn how to pronounce all your letters. A makes the sound ah. B makes the sound b, 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 C, you know, k, 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 okay. So the elements are pretty much the ABCs of art. It helps you understand the language. There's something else called the principles that are when you're starting to string your letters together to make words, and I'll talk more about them later, okay? All right, so for my friends, please write the word line, 
And we talked about implied line where, you know, get a job eyeball. You don't have to see the line all the time. When you break the line up, sometimes it's called a broken line too. When you break the line up, it's more interesting for the eye. Got it? Okay. Then there's also another kind of line we talked about, which is a weight line. And that is a fat, heavy, thick line. So like, for instance, for my students, we're going to be drawing some fruit, like some still lifes. When you're drawing like the bottom of the pear or the apple, I'm going to try to draw a pear upside down. What? <laughs> when you draw a pear, you would put a weight line at the base to make it feel like it had mass. There's another artist that was at the same time of Degas, and his name was Cezanne, and he would draw and paint apples and pears, and they looked like they weighed like 500 pounds, right? Because he would put a really heavy weight line at the base. It anchors your object, okay? Implied line is usually at the top, so if this is my pear, I would probably have like a broken line here because that's where the light source is coming from and it would be broken or implied. And then the weight line would be at the base, the opposite. So these are kind of opposites. Implied in, implies light, weight implies mass. Does that make sense? Okay. So then we talked about shapes, organic and geometric. Remember when we were drawing the bunny? And what else did we draw? We drew the bunny and then we drew the, um, oh, the rose petals. Those were both organic shapes. Organic shapes are shapes in nature, okay? And go ahead and write these down, please. It might take you a little bit, but you know, you can timestamp it. And then you can go back and see, wait, let me scooch this up, see how far you've gotten, okay? So shapes found in nature are organic shapes. That would be like a butterfly, a fish, uh, a bird, anything that doesn't have a name to it, okay? Not man-made. The opposite, and I'm kind of doing opposites, so employed and weight are opposites. Organic and geometric are opposites, right? So opposite would be geometric shape, and those are man-made shapes, shapes, shapes that have names, so a rectangle, a circle, an oval, a star, and a heart. If you can name it, definitely it's a geometric shape. Okay, so go ahead and write this down. And then we talked about colors. And again, these are the opposite colors. I think that when you teach, if you teach in opposites, it seems to make more sense. Okay, so warm colors are sunny and they are like, like the sunny warm sun, remember? Pink, yellow, orange, and then cool colors are like the ocean, blues, greens, and purples. Okay, all right. And today we're gonna to talk about space. My friend Edgar Degas taught me so much about space and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of how to do it too, okay? And so there's positive space and here's a little heart. So the positive space is always the shape itself, okay? But then there's negative space and that's the space around the shape. And like I said, if I can make a five upside down, 50 slash 50. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> My brain is hurting. So it should be 50-50 if you want your drawing to be interesting. And don't forget, you should break your borders with your positive and negative shapes. Got it? All right. Next is texture. So texture can be 2D or 3D. We talked about texture when we wrapped the texture around the bunny. Remember how, like, uh, like here, I don't know, here's like the bunny's head. And then we wrapped the texture around the bunny. We're using like short little strokes, ding, 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 like an avocado, right? Okay. And then texture can also be on a 3D form, like if we do when we go back to school in the fall. Uh, when we do, oh, my neighbor kids are playing outside and somebody just fell off their bike. Can you hear her crying? Oh. <laughs> I think she's okay. Her mommy's picking her up. Aww. I hope you guys are getting outside because it's a beautiful day today. Okay. So again, texture can be 2D. That's where we wrap the texture around the bunny. And it can also be 3D. So when we do form, ding, 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 ding. When we do form, it's going to, um, you know, you would put the, apply the texture to the form. And that brings me to form itself. And so let me get something. Hold on. I'm going to show you the difference between form, form and shape. Okay, so here is a piece of paper, just a regular old piece of paper. This is the shape of a rectangle. So the difference between shape and form is this. Shape, form. Get it? <laughs> I'll do it again. It's kind of, kind of messed up. I think it might be my water bill. <laughs> I'll pay it. Shape and form. Shape. Is 2D or shape shape is 2D organic or geometric shapes and form is always 3D got it ding 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 
All right, and the last one is value. We've talked a lot about value. So when you do a value, it's really about the, dikes, the darks and lights of your drawing. So a 10 is a core shadow, a five is a midtone, and a zero is a highlight. And remember, 10 is the hardest pressure you can get. Make sure you can see this, yes. And then five is half that amount of pressure with a smooth transition. And then zero is a highlight. And if you can take this shape, you can wrap it around any shape if you use the contour edge and you can make something look realistic. Got it? Okay, I'll get my hand out of the way so you can see. So for my students, please write all of this down. And like I said earlier, why don't you just go ahead and timestamp it so you can write it down and keep it on a separate piece of paper because we're gonna um, be referring back to this every drawing we do. Got it? Okay. So far, we've talked about line, implied line and weight line, right? Okay, and we've talked about uh, value a lot, right? And we've talked about color when we did the happy hearts, right? Okay, so today I'm gonna turn my piper and show you what I've done. I hope you guys are doing good. I miss you guys so, so much for real, these. <laughs> I mean, I like teaching. Um, I mean, I don't mind doing this YouTube stuff, but here's the thing, I can't, see and gauge like if you guys I can't check for understanding I don't know if you're getting it or not it's like super hard because the only way that I know if you're getting it is when you send me images of your artwork and I'm like oh man Landon's bunny was awesome good job Landon on that bunny it was really awesome <laughs> he did uh, Indiana hops instead of Indiana Jones he's so smart I love love how he draws so good so the only way I can check for understanding is by you uploading your images that's why if if you can do it and I know it's been frustrating for some kids because they, they can't figure it out and I'm not you know gonna force you but I would like it if you could upload your images because I've been sharing them on my Facebook page you're famous <laughs> okay all right sometimes I'm just like all over the place sorry it's so nice out and I really want to go for my walk so after I'm done with this I'm gonna go for my walk I'm excited um okay Turning my paper down. Ding, 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 Okay, here we go. And let me talk about this drawing just for a little bit. I talked about this on my other video that I erased, but I think I got a little too woo-woo, you know, the word woo-woo. <laughs> okay, so I knew that I wanted to teach you guys how to draw a feather because it's great with the contour edge, and it's great with the shading, and... Where, 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 where? And it's great with actually wrapping your value scale, we're talking about value, around an organic shape, okay?